del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y Giga Om es Larry Young. CS23 Lecture 4, uh, CS23 VC. There is nothing more timely than a dollop of money or a dollop of networking serendipitous contacts via networking. There's nothing more uh, serendipitous than getting the right piece of information at the right time. So creatively in the flow. These things are all made possible and or impossible uh, due to money pressure, due to the uh, inappropriately timed uh, bill that comes due. And not just a invoice type of bill or a debt type of bill, or I'm speaking specifically of a venture capital form of bill where there's a money pressure, there is a time pressure. So there's nothing more timely than, than meeting the right people with, with deal flow or VIP flow uh, or a dollop of money. That's what these signature business recipes are, are to do. And in this specific lecture, we're going to go over the ins and outs of how people do it right and how people do it wrong and some things that we can ourselves game and hack timing as far as these money incomes, these networking uh, fortuitous meetings. And instead of asking a fortune teller or a tarot card reader, hey, you know, tell me my fortune. This will be a two-way interaction street to literally engineer our own serendipity. Sounds pretty interesting, right? So let us initially start with two very core and fundamental diagrams that will come up over and over again. And that is the EUBM, engineer up a business model, which is these charts. That's number one. The other one is the bicycle model with no need, no trust. That's from CS183S as in sales. So we're going to use these two documents and we're going to uh, slightly expand on, on timings of money and timings of networking contacts. EUBM is engineer up a business model. It is deliciously awesome and it also coincides uh, with very specifically, Mark Suster's Basecamp. So why don't we put up the slide for UBM where you're looking at problem, solution, revenue. These two areas, these three areas, are incredibly important to how money flows in. So if you're, you're the VC CS major doing biz dev, these are the protocols that you will be hacking, which is problem, solution, revenue problem solution revenue not going to say the other quadrants aren't useful but i will say that in the whole jobs to be done process identify a problem putting a value to that problem aka the solution and then charging a percentage of that solution is super difficult for a salesperson to do it it's super difficult for an engineer to do it but if you both sell and do engineering thus that's what getting to this bicycle level of no need, no trust. And you see how that dovetails perfectly with Mark Suster's blog post, uh, which is right hanging right there talking about Basecamp. Now, coincidentally, uh, Mark Suster is not an engineer, but he is a VC and he has sold two companies on Salesforce. And where he has exactly stopped short is explaining exactly how to execute a base camp and getting to that base camp is getting to a level of security even in ourselves by having an amount of salary that we've made having a, a nest egg that we've been able to build up and then so the base camp is making sure that our nuts covered base camp is making sure that our expenses are covered Basecamp is making sure that that we're not stressed and we can go be creative in the commission side. So if salespeople are paid on base plus commission as a venture capitalist for as a CS major venture capitalist, your 
base is your regular job. Your straight commission, all gravy, all upside, where you're coding and throwing into these business protocols, is straight commission. Straight uh, charging a percentage of the benefit of the problem that you're solving. That's base camp. I wasn't joking when I said that the Wright brothers invented venture capital because based on the previous base plus commission, you can now see in the model of Basecamp, you can see that their sister Catherine was the base because she sold bicycles that made a portion, a large portion of the only portion of the profit. Those profits were plowed into trying to invent an airplane. That's the commission part. That's the uh, moonshot. Moonshot means you're here on Mount Everest and you're trying to reach the moon. That's a VC home run. Or the analogy of uh, Everest. Your base camp is below and you're trying to climb to the top of Mount Everest. Or if you're skiing Whistler Blackcomb, you're sleeping actually at a pretty low altitude, but the altitude delta is pretty high. So that's your base camp is at the Fairmont uh, in Whistler. So that's the concept of base plus commission, which the Wright brothers did. And in jest, I talked about how they invented venture capital because they're using bicycle sales to fund airplane flight, to fund being co-founder of aerospace engineering. So Silicon Valley Next and the new uh, R2D2 VC and this whole CS183 VC, that's actually old because what we're trying to do is we're trying to commercialize the technologist before commercializing the technology. And what I mean by that is we don't wanna just have an, uh, the new innovative widget try to sell itself. We are trying to sell that widget by crossing the chasm from the right, by, by doing the things that the Wright brothers did, uh, selling using escrow, selling using internal escrow, selling using one-way letters of intent. So these groupings are meant to keep us from getting to this next issue, which John Pierpoint, John Pierpoint Morgan, a la JP Morgan, how he co-founded General Electric and then totally dicked over Nikolai Tesla. So JP Morgan started General Electric and the sweat equity from George Westinghouse and also Nikolai Tesla, up in smoke, up in arms, uh, gone, poof, sweat equity gone. Sweat equity, if you remember, was what Peter Thiel was talking about in lecture five, CS183B, where he talked about how Y equals zero. Having Y equals zero is a founder nightmare, is an engineer nightmare. That means we got taken advantage of by some douchey business person. And remember, that's what CS183 VC is about, is trying to get timing so that way we don't get dicked over. We don't get screwed out of our equity. So that's what CS183 SE is meant to do is, oh, have you heard the cliche founder story, of sob story, where the founder gets fired and the VC gets to keep that money because they fire the founder and then they do a recap. This happens time and time again. Rich people, rich people, VCs, people of wealth, they've been screwing over engineers and people in general since the beginning of time. They actually have a phrase for stealing sweat equity or uh, relying on default or rigging the system to keep the engineers who did the work from actually making the money, which is why Y often equals zero. Peter Thiel, thank you. Great lecture, uh, CS183B lecture five. Giving them enough rope to choke means that you will be given enough of a runway and enough hope where you're super motivated to work, but the system's rigged against you where you're probably gonna default, you're probably not gonna meet certain demands or certain uh, a certain uh, hoops, certain levels of performance, and you will be lost. You will actually lose out. And TechCrunch covered this. Uh, also, this happens in my area of expertise, uh, personal loans, personal lending, where, where in this case, Warren Buffett, 
uh, bought a motor home company and also did the lending on motorhomes. Does this start to sound familiar? Not only do you sell the sofa, you sell the financing. Not only do you sell the, the car, you sell the auto financing. You make all your money, lending money on the car, ditto with the trailer park, ditto with the trailer homes, where you're lending money to people to borrow money on these trailer homes. That's called giving them enough rope to choke. And we don't want to have that happen. So that's what this video solves is, is nothing is more welcome of a site and awesome of a thing than having a dollop of money or a dollop of great networking contacts or specific information. In venture capital, there's a thing called the power law curve. The power law curve inside of venture capital is where if a venture capital fund finds one a uh, whale, one unicorn, one really big winner, such as Airbnb. It pays for 1,999 losers. And that, if that were to happen, you find one Airbnb and you fund 1,999 losers, you have a 10X fund. So that's a huge winning fund where you get 10X the money. Now, as an employee, you are a victim of the power law curve because odds are you're not going to be in the one of the Airbnb. You're probably going to be part of the 1999. This is what I'm speaking of when I'm talking about engineering serendipity is that you don't have to rely on backing the right horse or analyzing or listening to a pitch. You're just accelerating. You're just augmenting and you're the serendipity, you're the money flowing in. You are the, the, the awesomely good luck, the perfect tarot card that appears uh, at the right time. Extension of give them enough rope to choke goes along these lines. You put people who started the company, now you infuse money in. Once the money goes in, then there's a one year vest with a four year vest with a one year cliff. Let me repeat that. Once the money comes in, you've got a one-year cliff with a four-year vest. And that's just the prototypical formula for how you get your own company back after a venture capitalist gives you money, working capital. So you see how the cards are stacked against you. Now, if you're a great engineer, sometimes they accelerate the cliff, such as the, the, the Uber situation. But unless you're a great, great engineer, and that's why you want to be an R2D2 VC because they rewrite the rules to try to give you more stock so that way you're not just at the trough hitting the feeder bar trying to get that next dollop of stock. Let's circle back to base plus commission with, with treasure management. Now, when you properly ace the base, which you're moonlighting and you're moonlighting as a VC, so you've already aced the base part. The commission part allows you to play and allows you to be creative. And specifically what I'm talking about is what Ryan Tedder uh, was talking about in his Nick Harcourt interview where he was at once a struggling artist. And the way that he got himself over the hump, the activation energy where everything then started to flow, is he started to be incredibly creative. And the way that he did that is he sought so specifically, very much like Justin Kahn, to write jingles, aka movie songs for movie uh, producers, specifically for scenes in their particular film, where he would be guaranteed an amount of money, where he wasn't just hoping for a, a catchy uh, song with a hook and a certain riff, he wasn't doing that quite yet. He was trying to solve his own treasure issue. And that's the flow of creativity. And that's why there's nothing more timely than the perfect person that you're meeting or a little dollop of money. And that's what, that's what we are trying to do is we're trying to creatively solve ventures issue of all these startups that are dying. And this is the problem that we're solving. In the same vein of money being a horrible master, but a wonderful servant, having venture can make you feel like you're a servant in the system. 
And being a servant causes you a ton of stress because you don't really have a whole ton of rights and wiggle room, which is why a lot of times VCs even will admit a lot of founders are super stressed to the point of being depressed. These aren't things that are great or that I take uh, any pride in having identified. This is an issue and that's why timing is huge where if you can game timing and relax and play and be present and be in the moment and sleep where if you can't fall asleep, you're going to have a serotonin deficiency, which causes a ton of depression. And then people want to take drugs to fall asleep. And that's worse too, because that's just mortgaging your sleep because you don't get your REM cycles. This isn't my opinion. This is just stuff that I read. When you are an R2D2 VC, when you're a CS183 VC trained CS major, you're going to game and hack timing. That's what I want here and as far as lecture four goes. So there's nothing better timing wise than a dollop of money. And this is what getting to a base camp is. And this is what it means to edit, to go in and edit somebody else's uh, startup, where as a VC, you're doing a ton of business development. As a CS major VC, that's almost a self-appointed, uh, self-selected, uh, uh, self-titled um, uh, community manager, you are taking it upon yourself to be entrepreneurial by going in and editing uh, someone else's work as an external API. And knowing what's in the environment and just being present and trying to engineer serendipity from, from lecture two, these things tend to, to take form and take shape when you yourself are able to, to be in the present, to be in the moment. And sometimes these people seem kind of dumb because it looks like they're just staring off into space. And look at Big Head. I mean, he's staring off into space so well that he got on the cover of Wired Magazine and now he's guest lecturing at Stanford. And although I say it kind of jokingly, CS at Stanford, they love VCs. Look at how many VCs teach. So Nelson Baghetti, the character from Silicon Valley Teaching, maybe not that much of a stretch. <laughs>